So today we're going to talk about whether we should continue to wear the face mask or not. So why should we wear this mask? Well, it's become a more of a recent question because you're starting to see less people wearing masks because there are less cases of COVID. So the question is, should we, as a general rule, stop wearing the mask or should we still continue to do so? Well, prior to COVID, we were obviously using masks. Um, they were introduced um, to basically cover the mouth and nose. Um, and this is, can be traced back from, to the 20th century. So it's been used for quite some time. It can be seen as a preventive measure to prevent the spread of infectious disease. And clear cases of how this was used effectively was in 2003 with the SARS cases and the pandemic influenza in 2009 in Hong Kong. So obviously this is not something new. The information published you'll find seems to focus purely on the benefits of the face mask rather than the drawbacks or wearing a mask for long periods of time. So there is several other health aspects associated with the face mask which also need to be addressed um, as well in the current pandemic. So prior to COVID, there were examples, for example, 2007-2008, 400 healthcare workers were surveyed in which 70% complied with the um, wearing the mask. So not 100%, but 70%. Another research was done in between March and May 2009, in which 132 healthcare workers were interviewed, and they found out that 87% wore face masks, while 56% were compliant with safety goggles. Between 2012 2013, 1,074 nurses were interviewed in which 44% were compliant with wearing these masks. And surprisingly, between 2016 2017, those healthcare workers were interviewed, only 12% wore the masks. So based on this information about um, wearing a mask and also goggles, the compliance rate varied from region to region. So if we go back to COVID, the disease basically started at the end of 2019. That was when it was the outbreak and it became a serious global public health threat. Um, because of this COVID, it was an infectious pandemic and caused, well, as you remember, lots of problems as a result. So for example, if you look at 2020, um, there were 235 countries infected by COVID which affected to around 35 million people in which a million deaths happened as a result. If we just look at the United States alone, this had the highest number of cases of over 7 million and with the highest death toll of over 200,000 people. That was in 2020, so not too long ago. So why should we wear a mask now? Well, obviously people will complain about wearing a mask. But if we think about face masks, um, what are the benefits really? Well, obviously it protects you from other people who may be carrying um, the infection. Also, there's an hour protection, so it protects others from someone who has got COVID. It reduces the potential risk of exposure, protects people who are caring for COVID patients. It gives a feeling to others in contributing to stop the spread of this virus. And it reminds people to be compliant with other factors like hand hygiene and not touching nose and mouth. So several reasons to wear a face mask. Well, obviously it reduces 95% of respiration that transmits the virus to up to an area of six feet away or about two to three meters away. It minimizes oral transmission by preventing the virus from getting into a person's nose or mouth. The mask encourages us to continue to practice physical distancing as well and compliant with hand hygiene and not to touch the nose and mouth. So it's not just to stop the, breathe, um, stop the passing through breathing, remind you of these other points as well. Mask provides a feeling to others in contributing to stopping the further spread. And most importantly, the mask gives protection to frontline uh, workers caring for COVID patients. Such essential preventive steps may be used to monitor demands for hospital beds, which did come in short supply and also ventilation systems. However, there is a full sense of safety 
when uh, which can lead to a decline in social distancing and hand washing compliance because people feel as if wearing a mask is enough. Face mask wearers get irritation and feel awkward that leads to touch and adjust mask repeatedly. This irritation can lead to uh, infected faces, ears and eyes as a result. Exhaled hair with wearing face mask gets into the contact of eyes and leads to uneasiness and makes an impulse to finger the eyes, nose and mouth. That could again lead to a cause of infection. Also, speech of volume and quality gets hampered. Yes, it gets muffled owing to wearing a face mask that leads to involuntary um, um, having to get closer to each other. And this can lead to non-compliance of social distancing. Wearing, um, a, wearing a mask when you have a long nose or some face deformities um, means you might not be able to fix the mask properly. And this also can cause infection. So the problems about wearing a mask, well, obviously, some people just feel totally uncomfortable wearing it. It increases aspir um, uh, aspiration. It's difficult to deliver high levels of iron oxide into your, into your lungs. And there's air obstruction concerns. It doesn't look very pretty. It's difficult to communicate as a result of wearing this mask over your mouth is difficult um, to cough properly and it can cause pain to those with certain facial traumas. We also need to think about those sensitive groups who shouldn't wear a mask as well. So those people with certain um, respiratory diseases such as asthma, people who are old in the 60s and above or children who are below two because they find it more difficult. Those who, who jog or run outside will probably find uh, it better to not wear a mask to improve their breathing and those with underlying medical uh, uh, conditions such as diabetes and so on. These are groups which should not wear a mask. But summarising the main arguments for wearing it, basically wearing a mask is, uh, where sufficient distance is not possible, such as on public transportation, would most likely reduce the spread of the virus loaded droplets and therefore reduce the risk of transferring COVID. It is indisputable that infected diseases can transfer SARS to other people, starting a few days before manifesting clinical symptoms, so it can push the spread. There is no reliable data concerning the amount of virus particles that can be spread, um, but it's you know, with minimum distancing involved, but still it's important to have nevertheless. But those who would disagree with wearing a mask would say, for example, there's a limited supply of protective masks, so these masks should be reserved for healthcare workers instead of the general public. It creates a full sense of security. Um, the main role is the protection of people standing nearby, but maybe it does not protect the wearer properly. It's also important to wear the mask correctly. If it's not fitted properly, you can still get infected. Um, taking off the mask also needs to be done well. The mask should not be touched. So uh, be careful when you're taking it off because you can still get infected. And also finding a lack of nonverbal communication when wearing a mask might make people feel insecure, disheartened, or even other psychological problems. This is particularly true for people suffering from mental illness and hearing impairments. So that's a disadvantage. But if we look at the um, the cases now, there's um, still, well, there have been over 600 million cases with six and a half million deaths overall. Fortunately, almost 600,000 people have recovered from it. So you can see that masks have been, effect, have been effective. Looking recently, you can see that there are countries, including Japan and Korea, have high new cases. So we need to be careful about that. Looking at the United States, for example, you can see that um, over the last couple of years, um, February 22 being its worst, you can see that number of cases have fallen down. And that's probably the reason why you're see, seeing lots of pictures in the news of Americans not bothering to wear a mask. So if we look at Japan, we have got over the worst uh, in September 22. As you can see, the numbers have fallen quite considerably. So should we now feel comfortable with the idea of not wearing a mask? Well, the pros and cons of wearing a mask. I want you to discuss this in two groups. So get to two sides, the pro side 
and the comms side and prepare your ideas in preparation for discussion. Thank you very much.